Velvet shuttles. Sidewinder. Now that's the starting chip in the uh, Elite Dangerous. And this one here has no hyperspace capability and no cargo capacity at all. But that's been changed in this game. Uh, it might be an upgraded version. But um, it can it can go hyperspace, supercruise, as they call it, and um, or frame shift. Um, and it has a four cargo four cargo canister capacity. The armaments here is dual twenty two to eighteen lasers and seeker missiles. I'm not sure, but. Um, I think there are two loadouts, two hard points. You could have one laser and one missile launcher. Um, there's the Thargoid ship and the transporter, which is uh, the closest we have to the uh, Lacon, the two Lacon ships they, they have in the game. That's the Viper, that's the police ship. I should have mentioned that when I was showing the uh, the identification chart. I think I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's the official ship chosen by the um, the law enforcement um, um, agencies or whatever um, that operated around each in each system around each planet. And there's the worm class landing craft, and um, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I was glad I was able to uh, pick this up, uh, pick this um, game up. Uh, quick key control guide. Mm. Yep, I have over an hour left. Mm. Yeah, quick key control guide. Another copy of the Dark Wheel. Uh, There's supposed to be a sequel uh, written by one of the new authors. I have some more Elite books here too. And here's something new. I didn't get it in in my my um, version of the game. It's Leroy's Help Book for Elite. Product of Firebird Licenses by David Palmer. Now David Palmer, uh, I think he's a, an American man, and he was actually the very first person to have reached the um, level, a cockalade of Elite, in the game ever. That's that she's uh, claimed to fame. Uh, amazing, and um, I, I guess it was in one of the uh, later versions of the. Um, I'm not sure what year this came out. This is actually um, it was made in the UK, which is uh, normal because uh, David Braben and Ian Bell are both Brits, British people. Um, as well as the company, um, it was also uh, published by Firebird, but um, I'm not sure what. I think they were just basically, it was just them making the game using the um, an old assembly language, which is no longer used, but um, uh, I think it's as. Um, it took up as about as much memory as um, you would find in an email, I think. I think that's what it is. Um, I'll have to look it up uh, later, but um, or you could um, you could look it up yourself. But um, you could read up about this uh, if you have access to the internet and um, Google uh, history of elite. Um, David Rabin, Ian Bell. Of course, David Braben uh, uh, and Ian Bell are no longer working together. 
um, by the looks, uh, and um, he runs the company Frontier Developments, um, which are, have been working on the game for the uh, over the last few years. Um, yes, uh, yeah, this book. It's basically um, a hint guide, uh, tips, advice from the um, the very first person to have reached the Accolade of Elite. Uh, what's it say here? Well, here it says it says Elite is one of the most complicated and fascinating games available today. David Palmer, the first person in the US to achieve elite status. Guides you through the elite universe and teaches you the skills that earned him a multi-million credit fortune and elite status. In addition, a special section of the book prepares you to compete in Firebird's elite competition, which is only open to only the most skilled players. Now, uh, cheat sheet productions, cheats sheet productions. Uh, that that must have been the uh, publishers of the book. Um, that competition was finished, was over by the time I got my hands on the game. Uh, aside from the fact that I live in Australia, uh, I don't think I might have been able to get anything out of that if I um, had played that well. Yeah, in that small amount of time uh, apparently there's um, a badge they give you if you reach elite they get they um they s the game sends you a code or uh, a message it's probably a code um, that you should um, mail to the um whoever runs Um, whatever company um, David Braben and Ian Bell um, maybe it was Firebird yeah, probably Firebird um, and they would send you um, they actually um, made metal elite badges that they would send out to the um, um, the very very first um, players that reached the um, status of elite but um, I missed out on that and I didn't even make it to elite uh, in the original game so um, there we go uh, yeah that's that's a very um, that's a very good score uh, that's a very good book to score in the um, um, I feel very lucky to have um, obtained that. Uh, haven't read through all of it, of course. It, there's some very useful stuff in here. Um, disappearing stations, docking, um, trading. <coughs> uh, specific planets. Saving time. Uh, another way to save time is to switch to a side view which doesn't show the planet or to a non graphical screen after you launch from a station. And while the hyperspace is ticking down, the two rates at which the timer ticks down is an especially dramatic illustration of how much faster things go if you eliminate the graphics. Hmm. One last data jump. One last jump. Window shopping. Constrictor. Uh, there were some missions um, you were given once you reached a certain planet or um, had obtained the, um, a certain amount of credits through trading and combat. You were awarded money straight away in the game. 
if you shot anyone down, everyone had a price in their head. Um, unlike this game, where you can be fined, and the money you're awarded, you may not get it until you um, you fly to the specific system that um, awarded you the money. But um, that kind of makes the game more interesting, I guess. Um, the missions were um, you were offered some trumbles, which are kind of like uh, the tribbles from Star Trek. And if you took the um, if you took that mission, um, they would um, eat all the food in your cargo and keep multiplying, so you couldn't um, you couldn't buy any more cargo. Yeah, and screw up your trading and. Uh, there was a way to fix this. Um, I think I, I just decided not to take that mission. Uh, there's also the constrictor. You had to chase this ship that had this. Um, there was a prototype. Um, they had this. Um, had better shielding, I think. It's called the constrictor, and. You were given messages, um, and you had to. You were sent to specific uh, systems to uh, look for it. And at each uh, station, you were given more information on where to go. <laughs> Until you encountered the ship and um, had to shoot it down. <coughs> <coughs> on passing, you were given um, awarded some a lot of credits. Um, I think your status was increased um, from dangerous. I think it was from dangerous to deadly. Yeah, that was it. That's how I reached deadly. And um, I was also promised a, a place in the um, the galactic uh, navy, space navy. Ah, oh, never happened though. Anyway, that's um, that's the game, um, the original game. Uh, box um, that I obtained through eBay by Treasure. Here's another one. That's the BBC version. Uh, another score or if eBay. And notice the picture on the front. The Cobra. There's a Cobra, there's one of the big ships, uh, probably an Anaconda or Python or Boa. Uh, might be a Thargoid. Um, there's a Mamba or Viper, there's two Vipers there. They're the police ships, the system authority ships, what they're called. The space station. There's a, the blurb and the game screen on the back. Anyway, this picture here, I was wearing the t-shirt yesterday, you might have seen it, I showed it to you, I stood up in, in front of the screen, in front of the camera and um, showed it one of my earlier videos, um, it's in the wash at the moment, but um, getting washed, so uh, I'll show it again later and compare it with the uh, one on the uh, game box, but um, that t-shirt's the um, the 30th anniversary of Elite T-shirts uh, of Elite of the Elite game, uh, so I just had to buy that. Uh, I'll just show you. This is um, this is produced by it's the BBC. It's for the BBC microcomputer, and it was produced by Aconsoft. Here's what they have here. There's the. Uh, it's another um, keyboard overlay. It's more of a. It's just a thin strip, and it's got nowhere for it to um, attach, like the other one. Um, that's the same novel by Robert Holdstock, The Dark Wheel. Just let me read the bo uh, blurb on the back: A boy with stars in his eyes, shooting the rapids of heaven. The Order of Elite, a fighting quality far beyond the courage, macho, macho, and cool precision. 
There's a bit more there, but I won't read it. Um, yeah, it's the same story as the um, other one. It's uh, the same book, it's just got a different um, cover. I'll just check if it's got any pictures. Uh, you can also read this book if you have no access to it. If you um, log on, if you uh, Google Ian Bell's um, official site, you'll find it there too. Along with the, um, the original Elite uh, Space Traders flight manual as well as and there's other things there too I, I might show you um, if I have time um, I might show you um, after I show off my other stuff um, what's this it's um, it's a su control summary and it also has a ship chart on the back there have a good look there. Mm. There's a leak. Um, it's just uh, loading instructions. There's a. Um, it's another ship identification chart, and they're all purpley pink there. Not as many. I don't think there are as many ships in this game, that version of the game. There were quite a few versions of Elite. Uh, you, like, you can fill a bookcase with them uh, of this exact same game. <coughs> <coughs> of the exact same game. <coughs> along with the uh, two sequels. Um, Is there? Ah, it's the um, Space Traders Flight Training Manual. It's the same one, it's just got a different cover. It's got all the same. Yeah. And there's the game itself in the cassette. Oh, sorry. There's the. Uh, it came on a cassette tape. See, the original. Um, the computers back in the 80s, they, um, you could run software, um, software could be stored on a cassette tape if you had the uh, specific um, 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 cassette tape, computer cassette tape player accessory for your computer. Um, we had one, um, we used it and um, my dad went crook at me when I um, I actually took it apart. Um, I tried to fix it, but um, uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I don't do that stuff like that anymore. Probably void uh, voided the uh, warranty when I did that. Um, um, damn. Dad's turned on the computer, uh, TV. Do you need my video? Can't be helped. Uh, yeah, that's the BBC version. for the uh, sound in the background, but it can't be helped. Um, I'm just going to grab some other things that I just remembered. Um,
are some other things I, I managed to, um, I ordered for their online shop. The Elite Mug. They should have made them black or with the, um, colored with the, um, space, uh, space backdrop. It's rather bland with just the insignia. Uh, I've been told that if you wash them, yeah, it will eventually uh, fade. So I don't use it to drink coffee. It's just for keeping, just for looking at. And uh, hopefully the, uh, the insignia won't come off. Otherwise it'd be just a very um, boring coffee mug. And here's one I got off eBay based on one of the um, sequels to the game. Now that's that's what I call a mug. It's um, based on the, the sequel Frontier Elite 2. It has some pictures from the game. It has a nice 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 art. I won't be using this one either. It's um it's probably probably just as um, it would probably degrade in the same way if I kept washing it um, so I'll just keep it wrapped up now It's an elite pin, elite dangerous pin. I don't know where to put these, um, so I just left it in the package. The front here. And that's the, uh, the cardboard backing for the elite key ring. And it's here. These are my keys, house keys. Um, the Millennium Falcon. My first initial, Michael. And there it is. There's the Elite Dangerous Key Ring. It's also some um, crocodile skin. Uh, it's very good, um, I won't lose it that way. Here's some books I ordered through, uh, I think they're called Fantastic Books. Uh, Fantastic Books Publishing. Um, Tales from the Frontier. 15 authors from around the world. Um, Alan Shroud is mentioned here. He's one of the authors. I think he's the one that put it together. I think he's the um, person who's been making a movie, an unofficial movie, based on Elite. I'm not sure when that'll be done, but I'd like to get, I'd like to see that. I'll just read a bit. Orbital scrapyard worker Oliver dreams of exploring the galaxy. But when the return of the long-lost friend sparks a terrible disaster, can Oliver deal with some uncomfortable truths about his own life? A game of death. Chinoa, a laundry, a laundry, 
is on a mission to find her missing father and bring him home safely. But can either of them escape the Kalite Corporation, determined to reclaim their property at any cost? A question of intelligence. Miles Jarrick is a company man on a far-flung exploratory mission with a hired crew. Will he be able to return to his previous life, or will the children of Zeus stay with him forever? Children of Zeus. There are, these are three of the 15 scintillating tales in this eclectic collection where characters from the elite universe seek honor, truth, retribution, and in one case, a place to sell 300-year-old Lavian brandy. 10% of the proceeds of this book will be donated to Plan Who Do Wonderful Work to a plan who do wonderful work promoting child rights to end child poverty worldwide. Yeah, I haven't read that yet. I also have it um, in soft cover, which was given to me many, many uh, weeks earlier. Same book. I think I'll read the soft cover. It's um the um the hard cover is good for keeping. Um, I'll just I'll just put this on the box. There's there's four other books. Well, this one. It's written by Ellen Shroud. Lave Revolution. I think that's his movie too. That's the name of his movie. Lave Evolution. You can check that out if you Google. Google Lave Evolution. Ellen Shroud. Ellen Shroud. That's Ellen Shroud. Spelled A-L-L-E-N-S-T-R-O-U-D. And let me read it. As gripping as it is cunning... A.D. 3174, One Man's World, A.D. 3265, Not Anymore, Live. A single planet orbiting a dying star for centuries, spacefarers have visited, docked at the space station, and left with no thought for the people on the planet below. Bad luck at cards means bad luck all around for Petro Devender, who journeys halfway across the human controlled space to his ancient planet, whose name is barely remembered. What he finds is resistance. What it becomes is revolution. 10% of the proceeds of this book will be donated to EDS UK, who since 1987 have been helping sufferers of Ehens Denlos Syndrome. That's spelt E H L E R S D A N L O S syndrome. Cope with the often debilitating symptoms and live full active lives. Hmm. Reclamation, written by Drew Wager. Uh, him and um, Alan Shroud, I actually, uh, I know them from the uh, the Frontier Forums, kind of. Um, don't know them that, that well, but um, uh, uh, both of them are on my uh, friends list. Um, I can show you that now. 